amazing are these trophies? Wow, what's this from? Well, this is my drag best racing. friend, Salah, yeah. And you know, he's been drag racing and motorsports. But even in Abu Dhabi. Everywhere. He's crazy about motorsports. Sala was synonymous with street racing back in the 80s. Every now and then I'll walk into his garage, say hi to him and see like some of these beautiful cars that come by him. Welcome to SMS. Wow, yeah, this is amazing. Yep. I wanted to bring her specifically because she hasn't seen a place where they actually do cars and they build them and modify them and all those things. This is the best shop in Bahrain, by the way. Yeah, I, I can tell. It and I trust them with my own cars. It reminded me of Pimp My Ride. I just want to like send my car there and just get it all pimped out. Oh, that yellow that Range Rover is incredible. Yeah, this is what we do here. We kind of build dream cars for people. So whatever it is, we kind of cater to their needs. People order these cars and usually go through a cycle of like trying to resto mod them. It's like, wow, you've got a beautiful piece of art. It's not a car anymore. This particular car is the world's fastest foot brake car. What foot does brake. that mean? Compartment opens, he sticks his foot out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can't use uh, something to disengage the transmission like a trans brake, like other cars. There's room Rules for the street category, which we follow in this car, and you can only change the hood, bumpers, lighten the car. Is there a passenger seat? There used to be a passenger seat, but it's been removed. Why is the world so dark? Just realize. Because you have glasses on. Yes. I don't like that shape of Mustangs in particular, but I like that particular car because it's kind of like very aggressive. It's like all black. He calls it Little King. This car accelerates from zero to 276 kilometers an hour in 7.8 seconds. Oh my God. Like your fastest car on the road today, like a Bugatti, for instance, multi-million dollar car, would do the same distance in close to 10 seconds. This gets there about three seconds quicker. Wow. Say something. I want to I, I just thought, oh my God, I want to get in it. I want to scream. I want to go crazy. So we'll show you the heart of this project, the engine. This engine is six years old. Okay. It's managed to break the track record and the first pass, it went 8.81. The record back then was 8.88. We managed to get it down to 7.8 seconds, which is considered today the fastest small block Ford powered car in the world. They've done fantastically with that car. They've won a couple of records, number one in its category all over the world, which again is a really proud moment, not just for Bahrain, for the GCC. It's been holding that title for four years. Now. Even like when you compare it to the States? Even if you compare it with Mars, it's the fastest Five in the minutes. universe. Wow. The, the galaxy. A lot of the panels inside like that you don't need. Car. Yeah, I can see. Like all of this has been taken off, replaced with these little pipes. You know, they're much lighter and they have the torsion strength. These cars can go up to 300 kilometers without anything moving. He always throws in these small little tweaks that always enhance the appearance of the car. He gives me a lot of material for the magazine. The simple mistake everybody makes, they think is, I'm going to get a powerful engine and go fast. There's a lot of elements that have to be perfected in order to put that power on the ground. You you have to have the proper transmission, the proper engine, the proper differential, suspension, and you have to have a good driver behind the whole setup. So who yeah. drives this? I do. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Salah is actually really, really cool. He's funny, he's got some banter, and obviously he's very, very passionate about cars. Can I just ask, when you had the hood on, I thought that sucked in air and made the car go faster. But yeah. how does the air get in it if it's closed? We have this cover That's just to kind of protect, okay. you know, so nothing yeah. goes in. This channels the air into the carburetor. Basically, we have a little bit of updates for next season. We're trying to better our time. It's a toy shop for grown-up guys. Guys like us go to his shop. We've got our cars. He comes up with crazy ideas. He modifies them. He makes them better than they actually are. This is pretty cool, but you know what? I want to go see that Celine. Yeah. When the hell did you get that? We got commissioned to finish this car for a private collector. What sort of car is this? This is the Celine S7. There's a guy named Steve Celine, and he used to modify cars for Ford. And they built this car about 10 years back to enter a race called Le Mans and GT races. Celine S7. I mean, this is a car that was supposed to be a supercar. Didn't sell very well because of the lack of power. The division that this car races in cannot exceed yeah. 550 horsepower. The technology that it was built with was 1990s technology. It was a twin turbo car, 7.4 liter engine with no intercoolers. It's something that's been on the market for a while, but they had issues with engines breaking down. We addressed that problem. We had custom cores designed for this car, and we did all the fabrication. He's installed new mounts, custom installed intercoolers. He's doing a great job. When we put everything back, it will look really like an industrial machine rather than just an engine. Now we can go up to 22 pounds of 900 on the wheel. Yes. That's like you're looking at around, what, 1,100? I think we can easily make 1,300 horsepower out of this setup. On but the wheel? The, yes, but the clutch can't 
can't take it in its current state. It was very exciting and it kind of made me proud as well that there was a Bahraini garage that is actually working on this car and getting it back into shape. We brought this car back to life. We put the MoTeC ignition and fuel management on the car. To completely change the computer. But with this computer, we can log lap time. We can do traction control. He's rewired the new computer system, which is the MoTeC. That's the nerve center of the car. And he's like completely overhauled whatever was there from the factory. We can actually control the car remotely while the car is on the track. And you can be driving the car and we can see exactly what's happening on our computer. There needs to be a driver in it though. It's yes. not like a remote control car. We okay. haven't gotten into that advanced yet, I guess. The problem is, is when I meet these people, because I work at Arabian Motors, they automatically assume I'm very passionate about cars. I'm not. I'm just passionate about taking pictures and uploading them. Do you reckon it's going to be durable? We have addressed all the issues. As you know, this car was not startable before. Now we made it start. So now we can diagnose any problem if it comes up. Now the car is a completely brand new car. You can call it almost a resto mod. Can you diagnose the problem with my car, by the way? But your initials are wrong. Koenig Special. It was Koenig a German Special. tuning company that manufactured body kits and tune these cars. It was just like an old Mercedes. It was restored, apparently. What do you plan to do with it? The manufacturers that we deal with that do suspension, we're going to see if we can get a coilover set up for it. Yeah, there goes the wallet again. I was thinking of like grinding the springs down, but now he's like, it's going to mess up the whole ride. How is this stuff on the dyno, these guys? You still tuning cars? Yes, actually, we can have you guys go to the dyno and check it out. I don't want to go to the dyno. Maybe you should take her. A dyno? A dino. dino it's a rolling road. You actually drive the car up to high speeds, standing still, and you can tune the car. Oh, like a simulator. Like exactly. a simulator. OK, yes. I'll do it. Mo had to leave. Samir obviously took ages, and then I was supposed to check out the dino. Hi. Hi, Fatima. How are you? Oh, my name's Nadia. Hi, my name's Nadia. <laughs> Turn up and I meet a guy called Majid who calls me Fatima. Look, honey, I know I'm fat, but please don't remind me. My name's Nadia, OK? Actually, I'm not fat. I'm just easier to see. What exactly are we doing here? This device is called a dynamometer. Hello, Majid. Hello, hello, Samir. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Late. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You OK? Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. I was shocked to see that Nadia was there by herself talking to the dino master guy. I was actually impressed that that Nadia was holding her ground. Tell me about this dyno. It's a device to measure how much horsepower the engine is making at the wheels. You could measure anything you want, and we use it to do the engine calibration and to make sure that everything in the car is where it's supposed to be. So basically, you can you... test the car as if it's being driven really fast without it actually moving. Most car companies have a dyno. It's plugged into the computer, and all these information comes up, and you can fine-tune the ECU according to what you want the car to perform like. The dyno would spit a few numbers. It would show us how much horsepower the engine is making, the air-fuel ratio, the boost, torque, along so many other channels. And from this, you can adjust accordingly the from, ECU? From this, you could change the amount of fuel that you're asking for or the amount of boost. And basically, this would control the amount of the power that the engine is making. SMS is something that Salah wanted to do ever since he was a kid. There's no garage in Bahrain that does what he does as good as he does. Can you put any car on this dyno? Or is it only specifically for supercars like this particular no, one? this dyno is a four-wheel drive dyno. Four-wheel drive? And it could measure all the way to 2,200 horsepower. Wow. The dyno is like a hospital for the cars. So they get put on this machine and they do like blood tests and like heartbeats and stuff like that, but like the equivalent for a car. So that Majid, is... how do you stop the car from flying off? I the think there are straps strapped, in the back. Using straps in the back and stoppers in the front. This would keep the car where it is. Have you ever had an incident where a car is Flown off. We had an incident where the tire came out and it left a mark there on oh, the yeah. wall where you can see it. Oh, oh my God. We left it there just to warn the just, customers just from remind standing everybody. here or close to the car. It's really That's dangerous. pretty crazy. I was standing at the back because that was the coolest place because there was an AC right beside my head. But a tire has like come and hit the back of the wall. Can you chill us? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know where I'm going to be standing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Safety first, worries later. You think of it as oh an operating God. table. Make it go as fast as slow as he wants. See that it's changing there, this thing. And that's the power on the rear. He's even changing gears. He's actually driving a car. I guess in the old days, people used to drive fast and people used to run behind it and try and test and check it. Since the dyno was invented, it makes life much easier for the mechanics. You can then find you. Are you okay or are you scared? You look scared. I'm stand over here. Don't worry. It was fine, it was fun, but it made me very, very nervous. 
Wow, that was pretty cool. Thank you, Maji. Right. Don't stand there. You can't stand in the back. No, Even the, it's the hot, car's not on. It's fine. It's been known to jump. No, don't say that. We were also met by Clement, who also works at the SNS, took it upon himself to show us a lot of the other cool features of the garage. This customer wanted to make more power from his car, right? So he bought it to us. We replaced the engine for a Ford racing engine. It's a bigger size, so he can make more power. We replaced the supercharger as well. It's a bigger size, again, it's makes a more power. He was making about 300 to 400 HP. After we've done with everything, we're looking to make about 700 horsepower. Whoa. Wow. So nearly doubling the power. No matter how much you know about cars, it can never be the same as when somebody's actually done it. So we needed this information to reflect it better in our story. We've upgraded the fuel system on it. We have upgraded the cooling system on it. So it's good for Bahrain's temperature. So we do a lot of custom work as right. well. We have a fabrication shop. Do you modify cars for drag racing we as well? Do. We have a couple of cars over yeah. there. We have the street car. She's yeah. ran the best at 6.9, quite fast. And we've got the world record for that car as well. This is done with passion, not just knowledge. I can tell. I think the garage itself is really cool. I think it's cool what they do, how they restore them and modify them. And I'm going to take my car there as well so it's gonna be like really gangster G one day you're gonna see on the road and be like ah, that's Nadia and another aspect of what we do is we do car restoration as well so this is a 1972 Corvette we rebuilt the complete engine oh it's got a brand new air conditioning system ah, engine runs important. beautiful and fine yeah so his car is still a 72 it's still got the look all the sentimental value but it runs like a 2015, 2016 car. Salah's reputation in terms of restoring vehicles is beyond Bahrain. He's got a knack for it, now he's got a name for it. He's a sure bet. How long would it take to restore a car like this? I'd say about maybe six to eight months. Is it mostly wow. mechanical that you do, restoration? We do paint and body work You as do well. paint and body yeah. work restoration. So after we're done with that part, right. if the customer wants, we can do a full repaint of the car. You did the Salah's brother car. Right. We did. Right? We did the yeah. 1969 Camaro as yeah. well. That turned out beautiful. He's yeah. really happy and excited about it. That was pretty impressive, how they can transform a car and revive it and make it like it was when it first was produced. This is like the operation room of SMS. So we do a lot of engine and gearbox rebuilds. We have a couple of our old drag race engines in the right. back. There are some of them make over 3,000 HP. I mean, this guy is all about how to make the best engines because Salah is a drag racer and drag racing is mostly about the power of the engines. Hey, guys. Hey. There we go. Salah. Hello. How are you? We're just checking out the operations room over here. They get damaged a lot, trust me. But this is like a street engine. This is capable of like a thousand horsepower. This is going in a Mustang. All the interesting stuff that goes in the engine, they do it in there. To me, it's a little bit mumble jumble, but they seem to know exactly what they're doing. I'm a Ford guy. I know you're a Porsche guy. I'm a Porsche guy. Let me show you uh, You have a something. Porsche? I have a very really? special Porsche. This is it right here. Uh, 911? That's complete good. restoration. Yes, no, it's not a 911. It looks like a 911. It's a 912. 912? Porsche enthusiasts, which are spread out all over the world, know that it truly is a jewel. It's a 1968. Before they put the flat six engine into the 911, they did the 912. And they put the Volkswagen four-cylinder engine in. It makes this car very, very rare and sought after. Why does it look like it's really low on the wheels? It's missing the engine now. The engine wow, is okay. in the engine room. Gives it the balance. Yes. yes. So when you put the engine, it, it levels out. 912 was before 911s. They gave me a little bit of an uh, introduction and history on the Porsches, which I always love. It's a beautiful car, and it's great to know that you restore something as classic and as expensive well, and as rare as this. Any idea in what kind of prices these are for? Very good specimens of this car is going upwards of $125,000. Restored? Restored. All we're doing is we're doing a full restoration on the engine. It's just a really beautiful car. It looks exactly the same as the 911s. They keep that look, which makes you feel good no matter what year of 911s you have. And now classic cars are really coming back strong, especially Porsches. Porsches are good investments on wheels. Yeah. In fact, you want to tell the owner once you get the engine ready and everything, we'd love to put it in the magazine. Sure, sure. As I said, I'm not into classics, but it's a Porsche. To me, that's not just a classic, that's family. I promised her that she's going to be seeing some amazing donuts, drifting. You got to have something that you can show us, please. I don't have a car. It's very short notice, but I have something better. But we can do something that maybe everybody can enjoy drifting today. Really? And I have the machine to do it. A tricycle, which was even more fun than a car. I mean, everybody had to go at this 
thing and it was just fun. They had this trike that's like run on a battery. Amazing piece of machine. When I was told we were doing donuts, I kind of assumed it was in a car and not on a little tricycle. Okay, yes, it looked fun, but I'm wearing hair extensions. So the minute I start skidding around, my hair is gonna fly out. They've actually put plastic on the rubber tires to make it spin, just to give that drift and donut effect, and it works. There was this guy who rocked up like one wheel missing, started like doing donuts, nearly hit us. That could have been me on a bike, you know? I was kind of worried to tell you the truth at first because God forbid if it like kind of flipped over and stuff, it's hard to put me back together. It's just like Humpty Dumpty. But once I got on it, I really enjoyed myself. That was cool.